among the stars till the morning sun The story's far from over so we live on We still hold the pen for what is written We keep on riding, we keep on fighting We know that we ain't done Walking through the valley Some days it ain't working I work it out with a valley The chalk in my hand Ain't for the dead It's for my tally Points up on the board Keeping the score Cause we get knocked down But we get back up We ain't staying down No need for backup Stand in my ground I come from black mud I come from black love And I'm saying that We ain't dead Shine among the stars Till the morning sun The story's far from over So we live My soul has all the pain I've been here before, I'ma find a way Breaking through the chains of the enemy Let me go of yesterday I see the sky, I'm elevated Pedaling, bounce back, gelatin before the dust settling. We telling them we ain't down. Shine among the stars till the morning. Down. The story's far from over, so we live down. We still hold the pen for what is written. We keep on riding, we keep on fighting. We know that we ain't down. We keep on fighting, we know that. What's up, everybody? It is me, Jamie Radiance Forehead, your favorite Christian life coach, and we are back for another Jay's Morning Coffee. Yes, I know we've taken a break, but it wasn't really a break. Your girl, like, having some internet issues. You get what I'm saying? Like, some internet issues, and then I decided that I'm just not paying for the stream yard. Not right now. Um, and so with those two things, I had to find another solution, and God came through with another solution. Shout out to my son, for being so tech savvy and helping his mom out right so before we fully get started i wanted you to, to make sure that you subscribe to my channel if you haven't already And now that we have had some time to do that, shout out to everybody that has subscribed. We are up to about 4,000 subscribers. All glory and honor to God because it's definitely a supernatural thing for sure. And so we are going to get ready to start with... Yes, yes, the introduction. What are we talking about today? What are we talking about today? We are talking about how to write a powerful repentance prayer, a step-by-step -step little video on how to write a repentance prayer, right? I know, I'm like, so for months, for real, like before I even started on the pray without ceasing part, I was like, gosh, you know, like, what is like a real repentance prayer? Like what is, what, what would you consider that to be Lord? Like what is sufficient for you? Because like I've heard other repentance prayers are very general and stuff like that. And then everybody's like, oh, you got to go through this type of deliverance and you got to renounce this and you got to let go of this and you got to do this. And I'm like, listen, why wasn't that just in the first initial prayer? Like when I submit to Jesus and I say, hey, you know, God, look, I'm a sinner. I need help. I want to try this thing with you. I done did everything else. What's up? <laughs> that's not, that's not what you really say, but it's kind of like what you say. Like, what's up, Lord? Like, come on. 
you let people take you to this parrier and you know it's very generalized and and then like I said you get put down this rabbit hole of different type of things and there's this and so you know during my five week reset with Jesus um my five weeks we went through and really I was supposed to write four different types and I only wrote three um repentance uh worship warfare okay I never got to uh the last part and that was because I had to be unchurchized in this area and so when I get there, I will tell you what the area was, but I had to get unchurchized in this area because the way that we have been raised in a church is kind of like we have to be in humble e- equals poverty in a sense, humble equals being broke, humble equals not being prosperous. And you know what I'm saying? So like, I didn't know how to write this to be honest, um, that last one. So anyways, which I have, I've written it. I've written several other ones in between. I've written ones for cleansing. I've written ones for, um, for healing. I've written for fasting. Um, and so shout out to the most high, which to me is there's an order to, to this. And sometimes God goes out of order depending on the person, but to me, we should all have this knowledge and understanding. So, of course, we are going to get started. And I am using a new system. Okay, you guys, so you guys got to bear with me. In my other system, I was able to talk over what the next section was. But what I'll do is I'll just show what the next section is. And I'll pop back in and tell you, of course, what it is. So, I want to make sure that we fully understand that I'm not saying that what people have done in the past is wrong, but what I'm saying is like, let's just get it right the first time. Like let's cover all our bases the first time. Cause there's things that I found out that were sins after re- like doing the, I accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior and the general prayer that I technically was living in sin even after accepting Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior because I didn't know. But if you look at the way that this repentance prayer that I wrote or was prompted to write is set up, you cover all the bases. Now, here's the crazy part. As I was reading this, because I had done it for about 90 days, as I was reading it, like there's certain things that I was like, oh, I don't do that. I don't do that. And then like little did I realize I was doing some of it. Okay. And so like then I began to weep because I was like oh my god like I'm super disappointed in my in myself for like one being so prideful to think that I wasn't doing these things and two how long had I been doing these to offend the Lord like you be like y'all I'm just saying so really what happens is reading these what I what what was written and what is written in the Bible just helps you to understand like hey you really do need Jesus like you can't clean yourself up you got to let the Holy Spirit do what he do and that's just respectful so let's 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 start with some definitions um things that you need while working with me you need a pen you need a highlighter you definitely need your bible which mine is not over here because i have already written everything down so you need your bible you need the word you need to allow the holy spirit to lead and guide you into all truth you will be cross checking me cross referencing me coming back and let me know if i might have been wrong so i could go ahead and do some research and find out you know what's going on like did i do this wrong um did i say something wrong and then to give me the grace and the the love and the the moment to correct myself um sorry my camera for some reason oh there we go um to correct myself to be corrected okay and so um what else is needed you guys i think that's it oh a dictionary don't forget your dictionary and if you don't have one you can always use the google dictionary sometimes we use the etymology of words there's another lesson that i didn't want to jump down the rabbit hole with but i seen something that um associate posted and i was like very intrigued because he posted the word the etymology of a word 
and come to find out it's pagan. So now I have to do a little bit of research to find out like how did this end up something that we use all the time, right? And maybe that's why I was not able to write the last prayer that he prompted me to, but then he stopped me because I think I would have found out that that word meant something that isn't technically biblical. So, all right, you guys. So, you know, we're going to start with what is repentance? We are going to define the word repentance and and see if you guys knew that it meant that. So, of course, I got my handy dandy notebook. You know what I'm saying? And so I wrote down, it says repentance is the action of repenting, sincere regret or remorse. Sorry, you guys. Repent. To feel or express sincere regret or remorse about one's wrongdoing or sin. To express. To convey a thought or feeling in word or by gestures and conduct. And then let's see what's, what does sin mean. It says an immoral act considered to be a transgression. So, oh, no, 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 no. Transgression against divine law. So, of course, the divine law is the word of God, right? That is the divine law. And so you are sinning against this law. But if you do not know what the law is, how do you know you're breaking it? If you do not know what the law is, how do you know you're breaking it? Mm. Okay. So... One scripture re reference that I do want you guys to write down, okay, is why for repentance is important, which comes out of 1 John 1 and 9. And the Bible says if we confess our sins, he, is, he, which is Jesus, is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins. Why do we want to repent? Because we want forgiveness. Why do we apologize? Because we want to be forgiven. Because there's an internal conviction that happens when we do something wrong that lets us know we did something wrong and we want somebody to say, hey, I accept your apology, whoop de whoop, yada yada. But the thing about repentance is God, we repent and God accepts us as his His children, as his, as his loves. And then there is a eternal benefit but there's also a physical benefit called freedom and that's what we want we want freedom in Christ Jesus and so and it also gives you a deeper connection with God because God doesn't hear the prayers of the wicked which is what led me to going to how to write prayers and how to like the, the section. So we're going to start off repentance because once you repent truly and wholeheartedly, then God will hear you. That's why I say I started off reading these repentance prayers and my heart wasn't fully in it. It was the day that I started crying uncontrollably when I was midway reading, you know, uh, some of the offenses that made me go, oh, I've read, I've reached true repentance because I was grieved in my spirit I was grieved in my heart I was so disappointed that I had thought that I was a believer <laughs> you know what I'm saying so all right again my camera is doing the camera okay unacceptable so let's go on to the next section I'm not going to try to take up too much of your time you guys we're trying to keep this concise but direct but informful so that you can be successful in your relationship and the renewing of your mind, but in your relationship with Jesus. So here we go. Elements of repentance. So what are some elements that should be in your repentance or in your heart posture when repenting, okay? So the first one is acknowledgement of sin, okay? So like 
your actions and behaviors. How do you know about these actions and behaviors? Well, first you look at the Ten Commandments. Okay, am I breaking any of these, right? Then there is like parts in the Bible. Like I went to, this is what I did. I'm going to tell you what I did. So I went to like um, Galatians. There's a part in Galatians where it talks about um, the old nature. So I repent for the old nature, okay? Then I went to Romans 1, and I re I repented for having a reprobate mind, okay? Like, these are things. So I, w I started off with the Ten Commandments, the basics. And then I went to Galatians, okay? Then I went to Romans. This is what, what God was taking me through. And then um, I went to proverbs because there was a part where it's like a haughty look a lying tongue hands that shed innocent blood right so i repented for those things okay and then um uh we went to revelations okay and in revelations it says who would not enter the kingdom of heaven so i listed everything in revelations that was opposing the word of god and this would be in the last chapter of revelations but what i will do in the description i will make sure that i put the key um, verses where I pulled the, um, the things that I repented for. Okay. And so I'll give an example of like how you can do it. Now, I always, when I'm writing these prayers, I used to start off with just I, but I, um, want to intercede on behalf of people. So I have a list of people that I do intercede on behalf of, and I interject with we, okay. Us. How, you know, as, as if they're saying it too. Right. So then, um, an example of like how to some, some, how some people started is father, I confess that I have been holding on to anger and bitterness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And so then the next is seeking forgiveness. Okay. That is another, um, what do you call that attribute or a, um, element of repentance the next one is commitment to change so you have to be committed to acknowledge the sin seek forgiveness for the sin but also to turn away from the sin like are you sure that you want to do that are you going to do that and so when you do so let's say example part of seeking forgiveness so let's do this acknowledging is this father i confess okay Seeking forgiveness is, Lord, I ask for your forgiveness for my wrongdoings in being angry and bitter, okay? And then the commitment to change is, help me to walk in your ways and give me strength to overcome these temptations. Ah, uh, see how beautiful that is? The setup, the setup. But again, the setup will be in the description. And I will give you the main areas that I pull scriptures from. Okay, so let's move on to the next section. Are you guys ready? I think you're ready. Hold on one second. Sorry, guys, I want to step ahead. So we're on the section of step-by-step -step guide to writing a personal repentance prayer. So step one, step one, reflect on your heart. So if you go to Psalms 23, it says, Lord, create in me a clean heart, the repentant. But the whole point is that the word there is, again, I will put the key areas. I'll put the uh, Ten Commandments. I'll put the works of the flesh. I'll put a reprobate mind. I'll put those key verses in there, but I will not put the whole verse. I will put where you need to go because you need to study to show thyself approved. I'm not going to be doing all the work for y'all. Um, and when you read that, do you see those things in yourself? If not, have you ever seen those things in yourself? Right? So you have to reflect on your heart posture. Have you ever been bitter? Have you ever been angry? Have you ever had jealousy? Have you ever had envy? Have you ever, um, been a glutton? Like those type of things, you guys, like those are things that you have to assess yourself. Pride has got to be out the way. Step two. Step two. Ready? Write an honest confession. So remember, I gave you points on how to write a honest confession. 
which would be Father, I confess. Lord, I ask for forgiveness of. Help me walk in your ways. Okay? All right. That will also be in the description, just as key points. You do not have to do this exactly the way. Do what the Holy Spirit leads you to do. Okay? Because you never want to move ahead of what God has for you in this season. Never. You never want to move ahead of what God has for you in this season. Okay? So, the next one is ask for forgiveness with faith. Now, if you don't have trust in the word, because that's what faith means. That if you don't know what faith means, you need to go back to my little short 10-minute videos and watch them because I explain, break down what faith means and it means to trust. If you do not have trust in the word, if you do not have trust in the word, in the word, in Jesus, not me, not a pastor, not your mom, not your sister, not your cousin, not your auntie, not none of those, but trust in the word. If you do not have trust in the word, then you need to ask God to help you build trust. Okay. That's going to be it's going to be a roller coaster. So I would suggest that the faith that the further the trust is the faith as a mustard seed. Utilize that. <laughs> utilize that. Utilize that. And you can't let the enemy come in telling you that God didn't forgive you. You can't do that. You can't let the enemy talk to you and say, oh, do you really think that God forgave you? Come on now. Don't let him use the same tactics that he used at, on Eve in the garden. Okay. You surely won't die. You know what I'm saying? Come on. But we did. So the next is, um, ask for forgiveness with trust, with faith. Okay. Four, step four, commit to change. You have to commit to wanting to change so no matter how much you stumble you got to get back up and say okay 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 where am I going wrong in this area of my life why is this sin so strong on me and you may need deliverance right and God and the Holy Spirit will point you in the right directions I promise you they will um and then step five which is his favorite part I think this is God's favorite card part because we were made to do this that's why he created us was to praise and worship and thank and have gratitude for him right it is so important there's sometimes where god is going to have you pray and at the end of it he's just going to have you say and thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you and you're going to be like why am i just saying thank you but that's all he want to hear from you that's it. That's it. Just let the Holy Spirit lead you because sometimes you just need to say thank you. That's like that you just need to say thank you. You don't know what God has protected you from. You don't know what he has helped to stop the enemy from doing in your life. Just say thank you. You don't have to do an elaborate prayer with all the other antics that you hear all the time, you guys. This right here, this right here, I know it doesn't seem like it, but I told you when I wrote this, I was like, God, you know, this don't seem like what I've learned before. And when I started to boohoo crying, to boohoo crying, I was like, oh, this hit different. This hit different. And so it took time because, again, I'm an analytic person, um, somewhat stubborn. You know what I'm saying? So I'd be like, okay, Lord, let's see. Right. You know, not trying to like challenge him, but I'm just like, this seems so much more simple than what I've been taught. It's kind of hard for me to believe that this right here is going to work, but it, it did. And it does. Right. So it's kind of like, oh my God, what have I been doing this whole time? And I always say that to y'all all the time, but it's like, what have I been doing? It, it, you got to unlearn the system. You got to unlearn the system because half these churches are being ran by effeminate men who are playing with Jezebel. And we got to understand they want to complicate things. Now, she, now, the men probably were anointed before they went ahead and fell into sexual perversion. You know what I'm saying? But they did. They allowed Jezebel to throw them in the sickbed. Lord have mercy. There I go. 
there I go preaching. Anyways, all right, so we're on our last section, you guys. We're on our last section. We got five minutes before 30 minutes, and I'm trying to hit that 30-minute mark in the name of Jesus. Hold on. We are at the part where it says that we're going to be talking about an example, repentance, prayer. Um, I'm just going to recite this, like, just so that you can kind of hear it, okay? And, again, there will be stuff in the description to help you. Um, I don't know if I'm going to create another guide, but I will put the link to the five-week research with Jesus in there. And I will also put the link to um, John Brevere's book, um, The Bait of Satan, because I do believe that we all... We all should read that book, okay? Um, it really did change me, my life. It did. Um, and I was still dealing with some anger and some rage, so just understand it. Uh, it says, Father, I come before you today with a humble heart, confessing that I have fallen short in, put the specific area that you have fallen short in. I ask for your forgiveness and for the strength to turn away from my old ways. Help me to walk in your righteousness and live according to your will. I thank you for your mercy and I trust you in your unfailing love. Trust you and your unfailing love. In Jesus' name, amen. So listen, you could put several specific areas in that set in that area, okay? It could be lust. It could be perversion. It could be all kinds of stuff because sometimes we just be got a bunch of things running through our minds because we haven't been delivered in an area in our life. You get what I'm saying? And so our call to action today is for you, once I am done, once I am done, is to just, just... Look up Romans 1, start there. Look up Romans 1 and look at the state of a reprobate mind and see if those are anything that you struggle with. And if not, still write it down because you never know what is in your heart that hadn't surfaced yet because you pretend or because you haven't been put in that situation yet, right? And so you still want to repent you want because the heart is desperately wicked who can know it but the lord so we don't even know what's in our heart sometimes we don't know we think we know but we don't know okay and so i um super excited that i had this moment with you guys i am super thankful that you are part of the diamond tribe if you're not already you need to be all right, we do have a private group. If you are interested in being a part of the private group, comment in the comment, interested, and I will send you the link. Now, there are some rules to this private group because this group right here, we're not playing games with the Lord and you are not playing games with me. We are not wasting each other's time. We are not doing any of that. This is a serious group that is serious about their walk with Christ. Do you understand? All right, you guys, I thank you so much. I'm trying to make sure I didn't miss anything. Thank you so much for everything. I thank you so much for tuning in. I love you dearly. Also, don't forget to what? To subscribe to the channel, share this video, drop a comment if you have any questions, and let's continue to sharpen each other. Because what does the Bible say? iron sharpens iron and never forget that it's still at the end of the day if you have a pastor you want a church it is your responsibility to work out your own salvation with fear and trembling peace out y'all i love you